Yeah, bless up you guys. Boy brother Richie man representing Soul Food TV. Uh all the way live out of Bermuda, but here at Flavor Fest 16, man. I'm um, Rice, lead higher. You know, I'm following this guy, man, from the time I was doing my own radio show, the Soul Food Mix, been following on um YouTube, uh Facebook, uh various outlets, man. And um, you know, this brother's just doing big things. He's got an awesome journey, awesome testimony. It's funny because I bump into another fellow Bermudian, um, Antonia Chonet, and she's like the, she's like that church girl, you know, brought up in the church, and she asked about the dude. She's like, "Yo, brother Richie, who's this guy with all the tattoos? Everybody's, you know, he looks kind of scary." And I'm, <laughs> and it was funny because again, for her, this experience. I mean, I've been into the urban gospel, reggae, hip-hop for years, over two decades, and it's nothing new to me. And knowing his story as well, his nothing new to me, but for her, it was kind of a culture shock yeah. to see this dude that's got all these tats looking like a straight up, like, you know, straight up yeah, man, but get, just receiving all this love. But anyway, enough of me. Um, I just want to introduce you guys, for those of you that, back home that do not know about this brother, his name is Pyrex, but I'm gonna let him you know, say what he got to say. What it man. do, man? Yeah, my man. name is Joseph McSweeney. My stage name is Pyrex, man. I'm glad to be here at Flavor Fest 2016 with my brother, brother Richie, man. Soul Food Entertainment, man. Y'all make sure y'all do what y'all got to do to support this brother, man. His YouTube channel, his blogs, his podcast, whatever he's got going on. Support him, man. Because that's a problem in the Christian realm today that I see. Mm -hmm. It's just like secular. You know, artists ain't supporting the artists. Right. People ain't supporting people. And we have to be different than the secular realm. We have to be the body of Christ. So if we are the church, we have to come together like the church. So once again, my name is Joe. Joseph, man, I go by Pyrex. Everybody, um, I'm starting to get to know who I am and what I'm doing. I got yeah. a couple singles that I've been putting out, man, and, and um, right now, Open It has has been um, topping a lot of different little charts, man. And, right. um, it's been out over a year now, right. and um, he's just now getting the wave. And um, I'm excited to what God's doing in my life from where I was before Christ of drugs, pimping women, um, beating women, um, um, being in gang fights, getting shot at, getting um, um, clicked in. I mean, just drugs on top of drugs mm -hmm. to being introduced to Christ by a brother that 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 actually did Hebrews 13, 3 as in. Don't forget the ones in prison. So he went and did prison ministry mm -hmm. and um, introduced Jesus to me right. and um, planted that seed. And throughout a couple of years, different people, Proverbs 27 says, iron sharpens iron. Right. So different people was watering that seed. And then right at the right time, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, as it says in his word. And wow. I, go, I keep referring to the word because that's what we live by. Right. So if we're ambassadors, we are representatives of Christ. So in the word it says, if you admit that you're a sinner and believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and confess with your mouth, not mine, mm. with your mouth, that he is Lord, you shall be saved. And I did that in 2013. It was the best decision I ever did in my life. Let me let me ask you this, man. I'm, I'm a father. You know, I have um, twin boys, 20 years old. My oldest daughter's 25, got another daughter, 23. Um, and I've been watching your journey as well. And one of the things for me that's been a blessing is that you've had your son, you know. Oh, yeah. My if you was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you have other, yeah, other kids. kids yeah. yeah, but, you know, just, just keeping it real. Yes, we have all the industry stuff, man. But really, what really, for me as a father, for me as somebody that's had to go through the struggle of not being the best dad, um, sure living a father. back, living a backslidden life in front yes. of my kids. Yes. My kids have seen me, you know, the worst ups of me, and downs. ups and downs, ups and downs. You know, life. Life. life, straight up, you know. But how for you, man? How important um, is it having, you know, your young cub, your 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 your, your king in the making, man, with you, having him be part of what you're doing? Um, hey, speak hey, to that as a father. I'm gonna tell you like this, man. Um, <clears throat> keeps me on my toes. Mm. It keeps him, every time I look at him, it just reminds me that I have to be a father, mm. you know, and a father is not a baby daddy. A baby daddy is just a, a sperm donor, right. somebody that just did what they did and now they have a child that's being raised by different people and stuff like that. Mm. Be a father, man, and that's what I'm doing. I messed up on my first child. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. And I have a daughter that's 14 years old that I barely know anything about mm -hmm. because I wanted to live that life for sin and introduce to her when she was four mm -hmm. and then didn't see her again until she was six and then didn't see her again until she was 10 and then now she's 14. 
Mm. You see what I'm saying? And life goes on. So I cleanse to my son and I love keeping him around me, man. So he mm. can see what a father is. He sees me work a 60 hour work schedule because I work nine to five. I do construction. So mm. he sees me work. He sees me do ministry. He sees me be a husband and be a father and, and, and show love and support to, to people and give. I'm a giver. Mm. And that's how I receive my blessing because I give so much. Mm. And I don't care what it does. I believe in giving. So if I give, whatever you do, that's you. All I can do is pray for you. My job is to present the gospel. That's what I do. Because in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, it says, therefore, go. Mm. It don't say stay. Right. It says go. Wow. Just just one more thing, man. Thank you for your time again, man. Once again, man. Yeah, man. So Food TV. But just want to ask you this, man, kind of in closing. What would you say, <clears throat> man, to, because I face this myself, to fathers out there, rather they be artists, rather they be whoever, Christian, non-Christian, but for those men that feel like it's too late, um, I remember feeling at a point that it was just too late. I, I can't make up for lost time. I'm a failure as a father, and so it don't even make sense trying to be that what my kids need me to be. What would you say to those guys that may be in that well, space? I can relate. I'm in that situation right now. I'm in a situation that I don't, I don't know what to do but give it to God. Mm. And that's what I say to do, man. Live life, man. You might mm -hmm. die tomorrow. Mm. You know, you're so worried about, you know, fixing that relationship, man. You need to make sure your relationship right with God. Mm. Them kids is going to understand. They're going to eventually understand that they don't, man. That's just something that you're just going to have to deal with, man. It's just, just deal with it. You know what mm. I'm saying? Don't mm. drag on it. Don't whine and cry about it, man. Just deal with it and let God handle everything. God will heal the wounds. Mm. Don't try to get a band-aid and meal spawn and try to wrap your <laughs> band-aids around your life. Right. Man, let God do that, man. You keep living life, man, because one of these days your child is going to need you and you're going to be there. And guess what? Those years that you miss is all going to go down the drain because you was there that time that they really, really needed you, man. And you gave 110%. Wow. Awesome. Bless up, King. Respect, man. 100. Yeah, Pyrex. Man.